Well, all right. So we're talking to Jody Vest. Uh, what's your role at TTX? So I'm talent acquisition and development manager. Talent. That sounds pretty important. <laughs> and talent acquisition and what? And development development manager. Yeah. Develop. So basically responsible for all of the hiring, recruiting, hiring, and ongoing development of our current staff. Yeah, that is a big deal. Recruit, hire, and development. Recruit, I'm sorry, I'm writing here. Recruit, hire, develop. I So the reason I have you here is you do a great job, for one. Well, I appreciate um, that. And the evidence is in the quality of folks at Teletronics, TTX. Brandon Kenny, owner, Scott owner um and uh you when you came on and i've talked to brandon about this years ago um we were talking about from a as a client brandon being a client of mine brandon kenny um that it's important to uh invest in finding people like you invest in finding clients that they're equally important. And I don't know why business owners are such knuckleheads when it comes to that part. I mean, it makes sense because it's hard to find people and it's, you know, there's not a clear dollar sign connected to it. Um, it is connected in a big way. When you hire the wrong people, it's sure. a huge, huge expense. Absolutely. And uh, anyway, so you've done a great job Brandon did a great job hiring you, and I have you here because I want to talk to you about how you go about recruiting, hiring, and developing folks. Okay. Uh, so talk about, for just for a minute, about like how you got to this position, first of all. Sure. Um, and how long do we have? <laughs> oh, a couple minutes. Okay. Um, well, uh, uh, let me go back. I, so... When I was growing up, I, I'm a huge sports fan, hmm. um, and I, I love sports. So basketball, baseball were my sports. Love to play golf now. But when I was growing up, my aspirations, just like any huge sports kid, was to one day play professional baseball or basketball. Hmm. If I stood up, you'd understand why I really didn't have a chance <laughs> to do that. A um, little vertically challenged, but hmm. I took all of that and I loved to. I, I developed a love for coaching. Um, so aspirations of maybe one day winning a national championship for the Kentucky Wildcats and NCAA basketball, mm -hmm. that was a dream. So, and part of all of that requires you to, of developing a good team, making sure mm -hmm. you recruit good players, things along those lines. So I was always a sponge into how do you get the right people and, and bring mold those people together to create a great team. Um, so that mentality after I got out of school, didn't translate into coaching college basketball, but what it did allow me to do as I became a manager, it allowed me to formulate teams and being able to take that mentality and recruit key players that would mesh together to create winning teams. Hmm. That's where my passion was. And hmm. so I, I've had the pleasure of being able to do that for the last 23 years now mm. um and i you know I, I consider myself to be a a really good coach a really good mm. recruiter that's great what do you why did you get turned on to that i mean i i love what you're saying about the manager building the team i try to get my clients to drink from that kind of fountain i guess but what is it that kind of triggered you to do that? Well, I mean, why were you, why did you know about it? Well, Mark, it, it's, it, for me, it is, I'm a, I'm a people person, first and foremost. And my life, I, I'm all about relationships. And I think, I think that's our purpose uh, of being here on this earth to an extent is all about relationships. There's 8 billion of us on the face of this earth. And if you're not focusing on relationships, what are you focusing on? 
So that relationship piece for me, the recruiting, being able to bring people into a team and watch them grow, watch them develop, watch them flourish. That brings, that brings me all the joy and satisfaction that I can gain. Did you um, ever tie into any books on management or? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I've, uh, so when I first became a manager, I went to uh, the 12-week Dell Carnegie training. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And that all starts with how to win friends, influence people. Yeah. Um, that was a great foundational book. I did a lot, read a lot of, uh, Maxwell, um, leadership books. Um, I guess the most recent I'm, I've read, I'm now reading for probably the third time, five dysfunctions of a team, mm. uh, by yeah. Lencioni. Yeah, yeah. I'm a huge believer in the seven habits of highly effective people. Those are, those are some of my key go-tos. Yeah. That's all good stuff. You're talking to my good ear, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Um, seven habits. Covey. Uh, in EOS, um, one of the, you know, the the rocks come from seven habits. Yep. I think it's habit number three, I think is what it is. I think you're right. I think you're right. So a uh, buddy of mine, Greg Cleary, had the privilege of... Uh, introducing Covey's son at some big thing. Oh, wow. I don't know what it was. But he was telling me about it. I'm like, gee, Greg, that sounds awesome. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> um, and, Co- and, and the Covey thing is, he's an amazing guy. Um, all these guys. I met Lencioni one time. Oh, really? At a thing I was at. Um, big. I'm a big fan of the Five Dysfunctions. I also love... His uh, ideal team player. That's a big, I think, a, a really important, easy to access um, kind of process, if you will. There's a lot of. Uh, I don't know if you have you read any of that I, ideal team I, player I've stuff. Not, I've not. He has a bunch of uh, interview questions. I did some on a podcast a while ago. Um, around finding the ideal or recruiting for the ideal p- team player humble hungry smart that's his uh that's what he builds it around okay. um and and he has a bunch of i guess how to uh in on his website for that um i also love lencioni's uh, the advantage it's okay. a good one yep. good one of his uh of course carnegie awesome Maxwell, all these guys, really good. So all of those, and then, again, feeding my sports mentality, I'll I'll read some of the Wooden Mm -hmm. uh, stories, Coach K, as Mm -hmm. much as I'm not a Duke fan, but I still, Coach K was a great mind, Mm -hmm. Phil Jackson. Mm -hmm. Just, I'm a big believer in reading, it's none of it's gospel, Mm -hmm. but it's pulling the snippets, the strong points from each one of those. Yeah, that's right. That's how I do it. I mean, I, I, I sift through other folks' stuff. I think books are, um, I call them cheap epiphanies. Did Brandon never tell you that? I, 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 no, he has I not. have this deal uh, that I say epiphanies are costly. You know, the, that point where you're like, man, I should have been doing this differently. You know, yep. that's a costly realization. It took a lot of stuff, time, money mistakes people to get to the point where like huh i've been doing this wrong yep uh but the wise find epiphanies for half price the cheap the you know smarter you are the cheaper you find them and books are an example of cheap epiphanies you know where you get to read this wooden book and go huh look how he did that yep you know and you pick it up for like five bucks that's right right and 22 minutes of reading so. That's exactly right. How they did it or how they failed to do it and their misstep. You can learn from their misstep mm-hmm. rather than having a misstep yeah. on your own, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's good stuff. If if um, any other kind of management type books come, I'm curious. You have a really good foundation uh, from what I know uh, that has led to this. Here's how we're going to recruit hire and develop folks um and i'm just curious how you develop that over time that clearly have a 
work history. Um, but, dude, I have so many clients that have, you know, you just you said 20 years, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Well, a lot of people have one year of experience 20 times. Yes. Instead of 20 years of experience, you know, and... And you see this in the folks that you interview where you're like, nah, you're not, you're not our guy, you know? Right. What do you think it is that uh, sets apart or separates the folks that have 20 years of experience versus one year of experience 20 times? Well, uh, I'll, I'll speak for myself. It is, I think one of the most important things for me over the past 20 years of learning is actively listening. So you can read all the books in the world, but you, you, you surround yourself with solid people, knowledgeable people, and you listen, not only to those people in leadership roles, but also to prospective candidates. So I'm now at a stage in my life, I'm, I'm 52 years old. I'm recruiting 20-something-year-old people in a lot of instances. I've got to listen to what it is, is is important important to them so I can recruit the strongest people, correct? And so I also, I'm a father to two girls. I've got a 23-year-old that just graduated college. I've got a 15-year-old that's sophomore in high school. Well, I'm listening to them. What's important to them? What are the things that matter? And being able to listen but then translate that into an effective conversation and feed into that. That's what attracts good people. But being able to then discern strength and strong people, elite people from average people, that's just asking the right questions. And I, I, again, having all of that experience year over year and, and developing that and being intentional in doing so this is the difference for me of having 20 years of experience and one year of experience 20 times. It's that intentionality and continuing to grow yourself. I don't, I don't care if I bat a thousand when it comes to my hiring practices and I get, I get 10 for 10. It doesn't matter. I still haven't arrived. I've got to push myself to get better every single day in some way, shape, or fashion. Second, I feel I've arrived and I'm trying to hire people and bring in good talent. I'm not going to do it because somebody else is doing it better than I am. Mm-hmm. So I've got to constantly push myself. Yeah. Taking notes here. Um, <clears throat> so talk about your, um, talk about first your hiring or re- recruiting process. Um, we were talking before we started here about your the uh, that the software or the platform. Sure. So I was I was thinking you used Indeed. Everybody uses Indeed. Um, I pinch my nose and kind of say, "Hey, everybody, use Indeed or whatever." But what are you doing with first of all the digital stuff? Because that's kind of the a big deal, and folks don't use it very effectively. The digital recruiting softwares okay so what do you do so one i think first and foremost is when i'm recruiting is and and we have multiple roles within our organization i have to create an attention grabbing job posting first and foremost something that's going to grab a candidate's eyes and say oh this piques my interest first and then, so you don't just put something like BizDev, <laughs> you know, VP of BizDev, or yeah, right? Like, give me an example. Well, so I have been. I'm very fortunate. The last four years of uh, at being at TTX, we have such a great story to tell, mm-hmm. and such an authentic story to tell that it, it is. I'm speaking to. The most important factors for, for a candidate, culture, develop, ongo- ongoing development, growth, caring about them as people, 
those are keywords and trigger points that I'm making sure I get in our job ads. It's not necessarily the role of, oh, you have to be Microsoft 365 certified. Mm -hmm. You have to have A-plus certifications. That is the last thing I'm speaking about. I'm trying to draw their attention into, you come to TTX, one, this is why you want to be here, and this is why you're going to want to stay. And those certifications and all of that come out on the back end. Because those pieces, even if they don't have them, those things can be trained and learned. DNA can't. Yeah, that's a kind of a mic drop. You know, you can, the technical stuff is what it is. DNA is, this is who you are. That's correct. Yeah. How do you, so how do you say that? I mean, how do you kind of put that out there to the marketplace to say we're different here? And, and, and as I'm working with other clients besides DTX, and I tell Brandon this, and I'll, I'll say, why can't you guys just be more like Brandon? <laughs> you know, do what he does. <laughs> he just gets it naturally. But uh, the DNA piece, I think, is huge. So how do you, how do you say, in a technical way, on the internet, we're all about DNA uh, first and technical stuff second. So, our certs our and stuff. Our tagline at TTX is technically people matter. That's first and foremost. That's the attention grabber. It's all about you, the human. And do you want to come work for a company that puts you at the forefront rather than your skills? Skills are important, but you are the key. So verbalizing those things, just those three sentences alone is going to grab somebody's attention. And then uh, that's all I need. Let me get that attention, mm -hmm. them express an interest, and everything else go comes from conversation. Mm -hmm. And I, I can tell the story real mm -hmm. well on the very front end to make sure, one, I've grabbed the attention of someone that, what would you say, hungry, mm -hmm. smart, humble, and humble. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm grabbing their attention mm. through those words. But I'm also grabbing some other people that may think they are those things. Mm -hmm. But then it comes time for me to discern that through conversation. Mm -hmm. You've used that word a couple times, I, and I'm glad. Discernment. Discern. Um, and I'm working on a um, tool right now that I call the decider slider. <laughs> it's kind of dorky. But... Um, how folks make decisions. They decide to do something. And uh, and sometimes folks use impulse, gut, feel, instinct. And sometimes folks use math and science and data. Uh, but discernment to me is kind of straddling those things. Uh, and I think it's the right way to decide. You know, discernment intuition maybe is in there um uh, collaboration can maybe be part of that or something but what do you mean by discernment because that's a big deal and i i think that like hr type folks or folks that often get relegated this task of hey you'll go hire 10 people for us they don't have any discernment yeah. you know i look at the folks they hire and i think man can we get the keys from that person who just hired these 10 people and yeah. give the keys to somebody else, please, because sure. whoever it is clearly doesn't have a sense of what we're after here. Well, so I'm going to, I'll go to our selection process hmm. because it, it is a multi-step process. And to your point, intuition, there, there are analytical tools out there to help you make decisions and, and find the right person, which we use all of those. Mm. But the process itself, I find a person that's interested in looking at their resume, their cover letter, things like that. Is it someone that piques my interest? Mm -hmm. Immediately, 
if they do, I'm I, all I want is a phone call. It's going to be 15 minutes max, maybe. And I, I'm going to lay, I'm going to discern at a level in that 15 minutes of, is this person humble, hungry, smart, or are they pretending to be, or is this something they aspire to be? Because I'm going to lay it out. I, I'm, I don't try to scare people away, but I'm going to be factual and honest with them. Because we're looking for an elite level person to join our team. That's what we want. And if you're not that person, that's okay. So go back to my sports mentality. University of Kentucky basketball. All-time winningest program in college basketball history. There's a reason that they were that way. It's because they got the best of the best, and they won games. But guess what? Kentucky basketball is not for everyone because the spotlight's there. There's a lot of demands. There's a lot of that other stuff that goes along with it. It's not for everybody. So let me, on that front end, lay out to you, this is what we are hiring for, and this is what we're looking for in the human. Because why? Technically, people matter. Mm -hmm. So we go through that first step. Is this something now that sounds interesting to you? And is my interest still piqued? If that answer is yes on both sides, we take the next step in the process and go into a one-hour video call strictly focused on learning who Mark Whitmore the human is. That's all I want to do. And that piece in itself start separating TTX from everybody else. So not only am I recruiting them, the elite people are, are they're recruiting me to an extent mm -hmm. and seeing am, I'm, am I worthy, is TTX worthy of them joining that team? So I have to be different. It's not hard to because, again, I'm all about relationships. TTX is about relationships and the human. So let's, from that very first instance, let's go in, into who you are. Tell me your story. And are you doing that? So you have the first combo by phone, 15 minutes or so. And you're, um, are you going into that there or is that the second combo? Second conversation. Okay. First combo, combo you're saying... This person sounds like they may be they may be a decent candidate. Uh and you're using a degree of discernment to say, do I think they're they have the potential to get it, to get why we're doing this? Yes. Here at TTX. Yes. And are you is that something that you're gonna be passionate about? Do you have passion mm -hmm. about what you're looking to do? Yeah. And then you go to a second combo. Is that second combo by phone or Zoom or, it's, or it's, in person? It's it's video. Okay. Um, and it, it we keep it to a one hour conversation. It all starts with Mark. Put your movie producer hat on for me and tell me the Mark Whitmore story, if you would. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do you, there's not many people that have ever had that question to start out an interview. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, wow, this is new. So guess what? They haven't had time to prep, prepare, script what they're going to say. Mm -hmm. And you're immediately kind of taking, the, taking it down a notch. Let's be a little more casual and conversational in what we're doing. So hit that again. So you're, they're getting on the call. Let's say it's, I don't know, Bob. You know, Bob wants to be... What's a what's an open position? Well, you don't have any open positions. At T <laughs> Let me back up. So TTX uh, Teletronics um, has a waiting list um, of folks who want to work there or people. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. I, that's amazing. Absolutely. I brag about you guys in that way. So um, so you're getting on a call with Bob. Bob's like. Yeah, that sounds great. You know, technically people matter, et cetera, et cetera. He's like, cool. And he says some things that, you know, he's talking in your good ear mm -hmm. a little bit. And you're saying, okay, 
we should have a one hour video call. So you get on the one hour video call. This is step two. You have a little bit of a go no go in there. How do you, well, so how do you decide between call one and call two? How do you kind of go? I mean, it's a little bit of nuanced talent, right? In your on your part, but yeah. talk to the you know recruiter, HR person, or whatever, whoever gets tasked with finding new talent. How does because that person sitting here going, "Gee, Jody, I kind of feel like I do that, but I don't do it very well." Apparently, okay. So again, humble, hungry, smart is what you described. I'm looking for key things in conversation. Mm -hmm. One, is the person well-spoken? Mm -hmm. Are they articulative? Uh, do, they, do they show a strong desire of being great? Mm -hmm. um, those things are, it's not hard to, to pull that out in 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, any questions for me? Uh, yeah, well, what are your work hours? Mm -hmm. um, how, what, what's your benefits look like? What does your vacation plan look like? Those things. They're not worried about yeah. the job right. itself. Right. You're, in your mind, you're like, no, no, and no. That's correct. Right. Yeah. So those yeah. things it, it immediately will throw a red flag. And I, mm -hmm. don't even, I don't even need to have the second conversation. Mm -hmm. That's not the person we're looking for. Mm -hmm. So transactional stuff, technical stuff, money stuff. But if they're saying... You know, I really want to work with people I care about or that care about me. So Jody's saying, "Okay, this may be somebody worth right. taking I, I, to the next level." I want I want an organization that's going to allow me to flourish and grow. Mm -hmm. I'm hungry to learn. Do you share like vision, core values, culture, purpose type stuff in that first call? Um, yes and no. I won't go directly into our core values, mm -hmm. but I will mention. You kind of hint a at few them? of our core values. Okay. It, we're looking for elite, uh, elite minded people that want to be the best. Mm -hmm. We're a strong team. Our culture is awesome, um, but we have each other's back. So I'm, I'm speaking to our core values in that conversation, but I'm not laying out here are our core values. Um, but all of that will it, it presents itself in the conversation. Mm -hmm. When do you pull in core value stuff? That's what, all that second conversation second combo. Yep. Now, on the second combo, what, do you let them know at the end of the first combo you want to have a second combo? Yeah, we schedule it right then okay. and there. Okay. You d you're not doing like the movie producer thing, like we'll call you kind of thing? No, no, or? no. Okay. No. All right. Because, again, if I'm, if I'm looking for that elite person, I don't want to waste a second. Mm -hmm. I want to get that person in as mm -hmm. soon as I can. Now, do you tell them like, hey, I don't think this is a fit for us. You know, good luck out there, buddy had that conversation many a time yeah. okay so you have the second call here um talk to me about how you share core values and, and i i pitch the way i explain core values is hey this is who we are this is the the code to our culture yeah you know the core the the dna of who we are so, one, I, d I don't have a necessarily the, the perfect time to introduce core values. This is all conversational. What, when I start that second conversation, I, they know up front. So, Bob, we are talking about you, the human Bob, today. I don't, this has nothing to do with job, role, skills, any of that. This is just about you, the person. And I'm going to share with you some about me and i'm also going to share a lot about ttx to you and our core values what we stand for so again this is i can't tell you the number of people that when they get d finished with the interview process even if they ha don't get the job they'll thank me for the process because they'll say i've never had any process that has been like this hmm. from asking questions about who I am, being truly interested in me, the person. It's all the time. I had a, I had a gentleman on the way here today, I texted with, he went through that second conversation and that's as far as we went. Mm. But again, relationships, right? I, I, when we 
when I told him that he was not a fit for us today, I said, I see promise in you, though. I want to pour into you if you would like for me to do that because you can be developed and grow. may not be ready for you today, but that doesn't say next year, whenever. So all of those things resonate with the people, and they know real quick where my heart is, where TTX's heart is, and I start finding out who they are. And so through natural conversation in that second interview step, if you will, it'll naturally, it could be, okay, what are you looking for? What's the, what are the three most important things to you? Family, faith, uh, children, whatever those answers are, education, financial stability, those things. Well, okay. It, that could present a perfect segue into me. Let me tell you what's most important to TTX and mm. what our core values are. And mm. let me talk through those with you. Mm. And then as we get into that, the right people, that's going to resonate with them. Mm. The wrong people, not so much. They still want to know what their hours yeah. are. Those PTO and right, all that stuff. Uh, all of those things. <clears throat> yeah. I So... Um, so run down your core values. And for those folks that are a fan of the podcast, you know, they've heard these before okay. from Brandon twice, from Joshua once, okay. maybe Brandon three times. I don't know. Brandon's been on here <laughs> three or four times. Uh, we actually have one podcast that I shot with Brandon that he's like, don't publish that one. And I'm like, <laughs> All right. <laughs> Um, but so tell me to so run down that do you kind of go down through these intentionally or f- sort of uh, casually? Both intentionally okay. and casually. Okay. So you're I, trying it, to the mix conversations it in. Is, is as casual as it can be, but yeah. they're going to see real quickly through the conversation how important these things are to mm-hmm. TTX and to Jody Vest. Mm. Um, it, so we at TTX, we have five core values that we stand by. Number one, people focused. Again, that's, that's where our focus is, is on our people. Um, and when I say people focused, it's not just internal, it's external. We want to be the most tr- trusted partner to our clients, period. Um, and that takes special team, a special group to achieve that. So people focus, focus, number one, number two, it's called Philo, F I L O stands for first in last out. And again, we talk about people focus, creating that work life balance for our employees. And then we go straight to first in last out. It's, it's, it almost contradicts itself in a way because immediately people go to Oh, you want us to be the first person in to work and the last ones to leave also? How's that creating? No, no, no. It's all about taking ownership. Once you get into something, you own the outcome. That's what first in, last out is. It's not let me hand it off to you, then wipe my hands clean of it, and I'm done. We're all in it together. Number three is elite. We want, we want the LeBron James, the Kobe Bryants, the Michael Jordans of the world. That's what we aspire to have on our team. And that's, that takes a special person. It takes hunger. Um, What's um, the lady? Uh, Caitlin. Uh, Caitlin Clark. Clark, yeah. yeah. She's crushing it. She is. Um, but those are special individuals. Um, you know, you, you could go on and on. Uh, number four, all about the flag. It's pretty simple. We are one team. I as we, not I as me. If we win, we win together. If we lose, we lose together. It's not about individual statistics. And then number five is eyes wide open. Innovative problem solving. Technology is an ever-changing industry. Changes by the day, changes by the hour. We have to have our eyes wide open and be receptive to finding new solutions. As you're going through these, this is, so this is combo number two. Um, and you're figuring out ways to weave these in and out of the conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have folks go, whoa, 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 
what are you talking about? Like, are you, are you saying, what is this Philo thing, right? Or, or, or do they, like, what's their reaction generally to this? To the ones that are the ones we're looking for, it's alignment already. There are, that's already mm -hmm. going on in their mind, and they love it. Mm -hmm. they, they, it resonates with them. Well, do they, like, do they go, like, finally, somebody, or do they, uh, or are they like, Jody, this is really strange, like, this is the way I work, or, I, I mean, how do they, how do you know that they're resonating? When I finish, it, it, probably 75% of the time, that's, those are amazing. That's, that, that gets me real excited. And the fun part of this, Mark, is, is going through the process. It gets to the point where even at times after, that, after this conversation itself, people are like, man, this sounds like the place I want to be. They're telling me that. Hmm. So now you're not trying to talk them into it. Now they're trying to talk you into it. That's exactly right. And it's not about the paycheck. That's right. And, and here's the thing. I, I always preface that, this conversation. I can present to you any story I want to of who TTX is. But as we go through this process, the story is going gonna to prove itself out through the people you come into contact with, the other members of our team, the conversations you have, and being able to come into our office and feel the excitement, the culture that we have. By the time they sit down in our final step with our CEO and the director of whatever division that it is that we're hiring for, these people are wanting to be a part of our team well before that. Hmm. So at the end of this combo, how do you, what's, what's that next step? So you have this one hour combo. This is combo number two now. Um, what's that go, no go? How do you decide that? That goes to my instinct. Okay. Okay. So you're just kind of... I'm feeling it out. I can pretty well tell through the questions I ask who this person is, um, what's important to them, where do they want to go, and does at the end of the day, does that line up with... TTX and our core values. And I'll ask them the question, do you feel that there's alignment here? Sometimes I don't agree with that answer, but the majority of the times that I do. And the other key point, self-awareness, I'm already coaching these people on being self-aware. Be honest with yourself. Is the, the things that I'm telling you, does that get you excited? Hmm. Do you feel that you can be successful when those things are asked of you, hmm. because again, it's not for everyone. Hmm. Do you ever have folks that are like, you know, Jody, I don't think I'm your guy. Yes. At the end of combo two. That's yes. great. That's really great. Cause that's the point is you want to kind of set up the expectations where you're flushing out folks. Unfortunately, most businesses figure out two or three or four years into the employment that they got the wrong person. That's right. Usually they figure it out a week into it, but they make right. the decision four <laughs> years yep. later. That's exactly you know? right. That's so, exactly right. Man. So I love this. So, all right. So combo two happens. Your spidey sense goes off and you're like, this is our guy. Mm -hmm. Or, well. Potentially. Potentially. This, is, this guy or gal is worth taking to mm -hmm. step three. Yep. All right. So what's step three look like? So now we're getting into job role conversation, skill set. You'll love this. Um, we so TTX, we just invested into P predictive index, mm. personality profile. Mm -hmm. This is where that piece comes in. The, mm -hmm. Anybody that it, it makes it to this step will take the, the profile, the assessment, behavioral assessment, mm -hmm. so I can get a little gauge on personality. Does it fit? So let's say I'm hiring a salesperson. Takes a certain personality or somewhat, mm -hmm. a, sim, a fairly specific personality to be successful in that role. 
you can't be an introvert and a low level of assertiveness and be a successful sales rep right. in a lot of instances. Yeah. You may be able to for the short term, but long term you're forcing behaviors that are not normal. So having that assessment is the next step and then following that up with another one hour conversation focused solely on job role and responsibilities. Now, this assessment is not a make or break assessment. It is a tool for us in our hiring process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but it goes back. There's instinct already gone on through interview two, right? Mm -hmm. Now we go into some analytics. Let's see mm -hmm. from a scientific standpoint, is this person going to be mm -hmm. successful? And depending on the role, I'll have a senior engineer on our operations side. I could have a senior rep from the sales side to assist and also engage with these people to allow them to see a little bit more of TTX and the story I'm telling them. Because again, I'm, sell I'm having to sell the elite people, right? Mm -hmm. Having to recruit them. So yeah. let, let them see more of TTX. Yeah, because they're interviewing the company That's as right. well. That's exactly right. So in Convo 3, do you pull these, uh, the other folks in, like a sales engineer or yes. a director of something? Yes. Okay. And, and a lot of that, especially on the operational side, a lot of that technical uh, talk that I don't have the ability to do, our senior engineers can have that and, and nerd out for a little while, Just find out skills. Are they are they level one, level two, level three technicians? Um, where do they where do they fit? And they can also separate fact from fiction. Somebody that's trying to boost maybe their skills in a resume. Mm -hmm. let's, let's talk let's talk tech a little bit. Mm -hmm. Find out where you're at. Same thing with sales. So that's a is this a video again? It's one hour video call once okay. again. So at the end of that, then what? If I've got core value alignment, I've got a b the ability to do the job and be successful and it be natural for them to do the job and serve in that role, the next step is to bring them into the office. Because here's the thing, Mark. By this time, you've gone from a pool of 220 applicants to now you're down to maybe two or three people. So let's say it is a salesperson, a sales role that we're looking to hire. I forgot to mention this. One of the things that we also are instituting and have instituted is so a salesperson, one of the things I want you to do, if you look like you can do the job between now and our next meeting, See if you can get an appointment with Brandon Kenny or Scott Ursum on oh, a product yeah. you're selling. Really? Pick the product. See if you can get it. So they just kind of cold call them or reach out to them and see if they can sit yeah. them down? See what, they, see what they're great. made of. I love that. I love that. That's really cool. How, how successful have they been? So... Again, this is something just got inst instituted. We did our, it, we had a marketing coordinator. Um, we had two very, very strong candidates and gave them the project of take a look at our website, give us better brand recognition. Two people completed those projects, presented it to our leadership group. One stood above and beyond. So it was, it allowed us the separation because we, we were struggling. Which one do we want? It created that final separation mm. to make that higher. Mm. So step four, after you do that, you bring them into the office now. Yep. So step four, we bring them into the office. I give them a tour of our office, allow them to meet all the members of our team um, that are in the office that day. So again, let's confirm the story I've been telling you. Let you feel that culture. All of our people, so pleasant, so w welcoming. Um, they feel that energy. And then also, let's take a walk back in our warehouse and let, let me show you Polly's. Mm -hmm. um, 
<laughs> which, you know, that's yeah. something that Brandon and Scott invested in for our people and is yeah. something that's very special. And people see that and they're like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. It, it's kind of the icing on the cake. You're putting the candle on it. and So, Paul, so uh, talk about Polly's for, for a minute. It's a great, it's a great place. So again, all about the flag. Technically people matter. We're building community in TTX. Um, majority of our waking hours spent on the job and around the people that we're working with. So during COVID Scott and Brandon put a heavy investment into our warehouse space, basically cut the warehouse space in half and made the back half of that warehouse space, a community gathering area, if you would. So we have a, a golf simulator, we have a theater room, we have a pool table, we have video game consoles, we have pinball, we have all of these things to create opportunities to build community, both for our internal team and our external partners. So our employees will have our events in-house there if we have prospective clients, bring them in, let them be able to feel the center, the energy at TTX mm -hmm. in, a, in a very inviting manner. Um, and for prospective employees, let me show you. Let's show off who we are. Yeah, I love it. Polly's Places. Well, and Polly's is named after your warehouse guy. That's right. Right. That's exactly right. It's been yeah. with the organization 30 plus years. Yeah, I love it. Um, how long do you do this step for? Bring them, bring them into the shop, introduce them. Is this like a half day, couple hours, all day? So typically, it's it's total probably between two and three hours. Okay. It really just depends. There there are sometimes that um, it can be very quick, and when I say very quick, maybe in the two hour range. Mm -hmm. There's other times that. The candidate may have a lot of questions that we want to make sure we mm -hmm. check all the boxes for them too. Mm -hmm. um, or we may have more questions for that candidate as we try to discern who the right candidate is uh, to offer the position to. So it, somewhere between that two and three hour period. Uh, all right. So, and at the end of each one of these, it sounds like you have a go, no go kind of. You, you you pass them on to the next stage. Yeah. Is that right? Is that by th when they come into that office, um, that is the final step of our okay. selection process. That is more an affirmation point for our leadership team mm -hmm. and uh, allow them the opportunity to feel good about who this candidate is. Luckily, not luckily, um, Fortunately, our team has built the trust in our selection process and my ability to find the right people that they they already are feeling good that they're getting to that stage, but they need that. I want to give them and allow them that opportunity for the final mm -hmm. confirmation, affirmation that this is the right candidate to join our team. Okay, so step four, at the end of this, then what? You make them an offer? We, we, Brandon, our department head, myself, we follow up, thumbs up on it. We'll create the offer, job offer. And then when they, when they walk out of that office, I've made a commitment to them. I'm going to follow up with you by X date. And mm, the vast majority of the people are waiting with, with ba bated breath for that mm. phone call. Hmm. So on the recruiting side, so there's those five. Well, that fifth step is offer or not. Yep. Um, talk about the uh, apps or the 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 thing you were telling me about earlier. Where is it at here? I solved. Yes, that's it. Thank you. So that's the recruiting tool we use to get the the job postings out. Um, How does that work? I solved. So it, it, it is simply it's a it's a digital platform that I post a, a job to and it's got basically 30 landing spots, the indeeds of the world, um, recruiting spots, 
that it will feed and post that job to. And then it gives me a centralized repository of applicants that I go straight to in one, one single place. Mm -hmm. And then I, I have the opportunity to review those. And it, it also gives me a tool to step through the process as far as, okay, this person voice left voicemail or not to be considered it get in a, again, a lot of people want to work at TTX in a lot of instances. Uh, I'll, I'll get hundreds hmm. typically of applicants to a position, but I'm not, I'm not calling hundreds. I may have that down to 30 or 40 as I go through those and I can simply keep track of the steps in the process that I'm in with each of those through that platform. What does it like, how do you, how would you suggest somebody, let's say somebody's listening to this and they have, I don't know, 50 employees okay. and the HR person uh, is tasked with, unfortunately, with what you've been tasked with. Okay. Uh, so talk them through iSolved because they're going, what's this iSolved thing? It is, it is, so iSolved, it is a part of a program that is provided to us by our payroll management okay. group. Okay. Uh -huh. it, it's a resource that is there prov and provided by them. Okay. And so, again, it is applicant tracking software that you're able to post the job to. <laughs> and you are able to get your full pool of applicants rather than me having to go to Indeed um, or, or any of these other multiple platforms and have, say I've gone through three mm -hmm. to, and I have to go through each platform to track those applicants, they all feed into the single platform. So it's mm -hmm. much easier to manage. Everything that you need is there um, from the applicant and the tracking process all in one easily managed space is it um any is it fairly straightforward plug and play or do are there some things they ought to pay attention to it takes me about five minutes to mm. post a job wow and then okay. simply for myself blocking out my segments of time on so monday from eight to eleven o'clock I'll go through and check applicants, see what's there. And I can track, send out. I can send out immediately a contact email to this candidate through that software. Again, all in one single space. So it's much easier to manage. And it doesn't, you know, it, time is of the essence. And not of us, all of us are busy people. Time is money. So this resource gives me that single platform to do everything that I need to do in the hiring process. What was the other one? You mentioned another one. Start with an A. A HOLA? Yeah. There that's, it is. that's the payroll management okay. group. Oh, that I see. With. Okay. Got it. Okay. Um, all right. So you get them in, you, you, you go through these five steps, and you're like, yep, this is our guy, this is our gal. Mm -hmm. They meet a bunch of folks yep. and um, sign on the dotted line. Okay. All right. So now we get into uh, onboarding. Onboarding. So how's that go? It's when the fun starts. <laughs> They're now a TTXer. Um, so let's say any employee that joins our team we put together anywhere between and it depends on role anywhere between a 90 and 100 180 day hmm. onboarding process hmm. um specific to their job I'm a, I'm a big believer train equip and power i i want to make sure that i ttx we have done everything in our power, provided the tools and the training to allow someone to be successful in their role. So train, equip, empower. I want to give them the exposure to all the tools, they, all of the software tools they need, let them have the knowledge of how those system works, the proper way to operate those. Also, 
um, understand the TTX process and how we do things. The one thing I, I want to be very careful when I say that is we're not creating robots, okay? We're hiring elite people, so we want to make sure that the, the individual themselves is, is able to show themselves off and what they're capable of doing. But we want to walk through how we gain customer loyalty, if you will. We want, our, we want clients for life. Um, and because to your point at the very beginning, you don't have time to spend on hiring the right people because you have, you want to be selling and, and gaining new clients. Well, guess what? Finding hard, finding good people is hard to do. Finding good clients is hard to do. So you have to invest in both because the only way you keep good clients is by hiring good people. Mm. Yeah. One time I was, I, I have a client with, uh, seven or eight hundred employees and uh, we were working through an issue in a intense session <laughs> with the leadership team this is a number of years ago and uh, they were talking about performance and talking about <clears throat> um, putting people in the seats and all that and while they were fighting and arguing, I looked up how many scouts the Red Sox have. <laughs> and <clears throat> it was 125 scouts. They have 25 people on the, on the well, on the, on the roster, 40-man yeah. roster. Yep. Like, guys, there's 125 scouts and 40 players. That's right. So, you know, a Major League Baseball team – invests far more well not far more but they have more people not maybe money but sure. more people aimed at getting less players this is a big deal sure. we gotta we gotta be very very invested in finding these great folks and it's not easy uh and it takes a significant um investment of energy and time and talent and equipment and space uh, to get these folks in here and get them rolling. So uh, I love that uh, TTX has been doing that. Well, and, um, and, and Mark, the, the, the thing is in this day and age, you are not going to get elite people on your team unless you're willing to invest in those people. Yeah. You're just not. It's not going to happen. And if you do, they're quickly going to figure out that you're not willing to invest in them, mm -hmm. and they're going to quickly figure out they need to find a, yeah. an exit strategy. Yeah, and the good folks are going to figure that out and move on. That's right. Right? And and so the, the dirty, dark side of this is the folks who can't figure it out are going to stick with you. That's right. So <laughs> yeah. you get the, you get the yeah. 50th percentile and below. Yeah, that's right. And how are you going to? How are you going to sell and execute for your clients with sub subpar folks? You're not going to do deal. it well. It's a big, big deal. Um, a bad hire, and I, you, you've, I'm sure you've heard this, but a bad hire costs 10 times what you pay them. Yep. Uh, and if they're a manager or a leader, it's 15 times minimum what you pay them. Yep. Uh, and I've worked through this in uh, pr practically – in a, a process with teams when we put somebody up on the board who's like, all right, is this guy cutting it or not? Yeah. You know, it's like, no, they're not cutting it. Or post letting someone go sure. <clears throat> who was a leadership team person. Or even a, we, we, at one time we did, did this, <clears throat> I've done it eight or 10 times, but um, boots on the ground, $37,000 a year, total front door newbie entry level mm -hmm. person um took them nine months to get them out to f to figure out this was the wrong person yeah. did the math and and i have a tool brandon talks about it it's the aar tool after action review tool yep and <clears throat> where you kind of go through all right what we're we trying to do what actually happened what do we put in what do we get out 
what we're going to do about it later, you know. Um, and in that process, I we ran through a total uh, boots on the ground um, a green hire and did the math. I made the, I made them do the math around, uh, okay, so do we lose any clients from this right. person? They're like, oh, crap. All right, how much did that cost us? Did we lose any great hires? Like, we had some great people working here that left mm -hmm. because of this person. Who's that? Let's do the math on that. All right. Okay, so if they left, what clients left because those good people left? Oh, crap. And we did the math on that. Um, hey, how much time did you give them? Uh, because you had to micromanage them. Let's do the math on that. Yep. And dude, it was a forty thousand dollar hire that cost us four hundred thousand. Like we literally got to four hundred thousand. Yeah, I just believe by it. adding up. And a leader is fifteen times, you know. So a, a department head, manager, whatever. So it's a huge deal that uh, in this ninety to one hundred eighty days, we figure out. If these guys or gals are keepers, well, it, it's one more. A lot of people take the mentality, and and again, just re reading through again for the umpteenth time, the five dysfunctions mm -hmm. of a team. They don't have time to hire, so let's find a body, let's bring them in and, and go. The fact of the matter is, you do not have time, not to spend hiring the right person because if you all you're doing wash rinse repeat wash rinse repeat because those people if you're looking for a quality person you have to spend the time because if not you're either going to get yourself stuck in mediocre mediocrity because that's all you've got it's mediocre people on your team or far less than that or you spend the time and you get yourself an elite bench and an elite team, watch how quick you grow then. Watch how successful you are then. It's pretty simple math. But our world is not always, uh, we don't use logic in a lot of instances. Yeah. Yeah. We think we do. Right. It's like, no, nobody, you're feeling, you're not thinking right now. That's right. Um, so on this onboarding thing, how do you decide that like you clearly have some sort of process? Did you build the process, the 90-day to 180-day process? Yes. Where do you keep that? Or how do you, like, how do you make sure? Now, the only reason I'm poking at this is, and I know that you're really good at this, but I'm doing, I'm poking at you because somebody's listening who's going, wait, you wrote that down? <laughs> you know, and you're like, dude, it's not a process if you don't write it down. That's right. That's right. You know? So, so again, multiple roles within the organization, we've, we've hired for many of those roles. Mm -hmm. Every time that I've hired a new role, I've created our onboarding plan for that role, specific to that role, and save it in a spreadsheet format when I'm hiring again for that next role, is all of this current and accurate? It's a little, it's a little bit of an effort on the front end, mm -hmm. but then it's just maintenance and customization. Now I have to pick dates. So again, 180 day process, very intentional on the first two weeks of getting these people time with members of our leadership team getting them set up with LinkedIn profiles, things along those lines, making sure that the, they know the, the softwares that are available to us. But more importantly, that time with the leadership team in those first two weeks, they spend roughly probably four to six hours with Brandon talking through history of the company, core values, expectations, mm -hmm. what he's, his vision is for the future of the organization. So, that's in the first two days. They have very clear insight into the organization of what we're trying to accomplish coming straight from our CEO. They, they sit down with um, the director of operations, director of sales, um, our director of technology, our, our CFO, all of these individuals to 
understand at a big picture view what it is that they're a part of and what we're trying to accomplish as an organization. And then after those first two weeks, we start digging into more of, in your role, here are the tools that are available to you and how you can utilize these tools to help us accomplish the big picture goal. And then it just continues to sift through that. So that first 30 days, we call it fundamentals of the tools that are available to them. Once they get beyond that, now it becomes more of a, it can become more of a hybrid 60, 90, 180, where they can pour, perfor, start performing some functions of their job during that time, but we're also continuing to feed them to allow them to be equipped and then empowered mm -hmm. to do their job fully. Yeah. This sounds like a lot of work. Uh, and it's, uh, it's worth doing, I, and, it's, and it's why a lot of folks don't do it, though, is because they're so busy putting out the little fires, you know, and uh, I love that you're really invested as a company in doing the deeper work. I mean, who, I, as I'm working with folks, they're not bringing on board people that meet with the CEO, the CFO, the COO, the CIO, whatever you call that, you know, technology, sure. et cetera, right? And and these folks are meeting with them in the first two days That's right. at, at, at TTX. And often when folks come into a business, nobody knows. And they're just like, well, there's this laptop over there. See if you can get it going and uh, talk to the secretary and she'll help you with lunch and you know, we'll meet next week. Yep. Right. And it's, and the, the poor schlub is like, what the heck have I just signed up for? That's right. That's right. You know? Yeah. So one thing that we do, so I'm responsible. I'll work with our, our marketing coordinator. Once we have the, the new hire, the ink is dried on the paper. Mm -hmm. They're a TTXer now. Um, I'm getting with them finding size, what size clothes you wear. Mm -hmm. Shirts you wear. We've got a full swag package welcoming them at their cube with their laptop, their phone, everything's there. As soon as they walk in the door, their face is on the screen, uh, welcoming them to TTX. Mm -hmm. We do a um, new employee introduction that the, the new employee fills out for us that all of our team members have access to a day or two prior to the person joining that they can read through and get familiar with the person. Mm -hmm. So when they walk through that door the first time, they're welcomed as a TTXer and they're part of us. And day one, they're joining their department head and the CEO and myself for lunch. It's very intentional every day, every time we bring someone in. Brandon just sent me, I was on vacation last week, but he sent me a great idea that we're going to implement. Instead of doing that, every first day a new employee goes, we're going to have a company luncheon. Hmm. We'll bring in the food and let's make it where everybody mm -hmm. gets to be a part of that. That's great. That's great. But it's intentionality, Mark. That's all yeah. it is. Yeah. is. Is it work? Yes. Yeah. But do you want to make an impact and show that you have a great organization, do a little yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think that's the, the takeaway here is that to have a great, nobody has a great organization. Nobody's anything great without a lot of work and intentionality and uh, pulling away and saying, okay, did that work or not? What are we going to do about it differently next right. time? Right, learning from our mistakes, that's right. changing how we do stuff, tossing stuff out that doesn't work, and fishing around for stuff that does. That's right. You know, it takes constant maintenance, you know, and, and care. Eyes wide open. Yeah, that's right. I love that. What about the, uh, the third step, the kind of like the uh, development piece? How does that, how do you do that? Or give, give me the kind of nuts and bolts. So 
It's all individual based. So I, I meet with members of our team pretty regularly. Hmm. I mean, part of it's I've built relationships with all of them. So I, I'm, how's it going? Uh, and we will constantly meet. And at the beginning of every calendar year, our intention is to create a development syllabus for each and every, hmm. a customized development syllabus for each and every employee. Now, do you sit team. down with them and say, hey, let's let's work on this? Is it kind of you picking up stuff along the way? How do you? Both. Both of yes. them. So I'm taking notes throughout the year, okay. understanding where their strengths are. I'm speaking with their managers, understanding mm-hmm. those things. I'm speaking mm-hmm. with the employees. Where do you desire to go? What do you want to accomplish mm-hmm. in the next five years? How can I help mm-hmm. you with that? Mm-hmm. And then creating mm-hmm. a customer. Some of this, this development piece, Mark, may not even be directly related to their current role, but if they have a desire to be a leader of an organization, a department, five years from now, 10 years from now, let me feed that. Mm-hmm. It's what you have to do if you want to lead mm-hmm. people, right? you got to continue to feed. And it may come to the point that an individual gets to the point that they're ready to take on a leadership role and TTX doesn't have one. Then what? Then it's well done. Thanks for the investment that you poured into TTX. Mm. Go fly. Yeah. That's when we've done our job and done it well. And that's going to draw in the next elite player to our team. Yeah. Hmm. We can't be scared of that if technically people matter. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. I don't know if I told you this, but I I have a, a buddy... Uh, who is a major league major league pitcher? Okay, and who I did, uh, I babysat him when he was two. Oh wow! Uh, same age as my oldest, and we've kind of kept connected. My my, uh, I'm good friends with his parents, and my wife is also. And uh, we got together over. So this is. Uh, year and a half ago, two years ago, over spring uh, spring training. Okay. And uh, he got signed by the Brewers and then uh, got hurt and then went off to uh, – he was in minor league for a long time, then went off to Taiwan, and then got signed by the White Sox, and then went off to Taiwan. It, it, it's this, the common story. Sure. Um, got signed by the Dodgers. And my wife and I went out to spring training a year and a half, two years ago, whatever, um, because she's got this thing that she does that's a, uh, she's a nurse psychiatrist, nurse practitioner of psychiatry, and does this thing that helps you figure out this stuff that he knew about, and his mom's like, hey, can she come do this thing? So I tagged along, essentially, okay. is the deal. <laughs> um, and and uh, um, the Dodgers, and it got this, like, firsthand comparison between inside baseball between the Dodgers and how they do it and the White Sox and how they do it. Um, onboarding, recruiting, development. And the Dodgers and the White Sox at spring training are on the same facility. Uh, where they're, It's one facility, but there's one side to White Sox and the other side is the Dodgers. Okay. And even that was really different between how the two organizations thought about their spring training facility. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he, my friend, Dylan Covey, had been through both situations. And I was like, dude, what's it like? Like, how are they different? He's like, oh, man, the one is really bad, and they're, you're just a number. Uh, but the Dodgers like are all about your they, so he walked in and he's like they had a customized diet for him the the white Sox, they're like there's some pizza over there <laughs> yeah you know yeah the dodgers are like no 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 here's your app that shows what you should be eating or should not be eating based on your arm and your thing with your hip or whatever and they were like all about developing him no matter where he landed sure um and very very humble and very proactive 
uh, very interactive. And the other organization was money, 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 numbers, 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 cover your butt, watch out for yourself, you know, stab each other in the back. Very different culture. Yeah. Uh, and you can see it in the pennants on the wall. That's right. Right? That's right. Um, and, and, and he was happier. All the people were happier. So uh, very interesting. Well, it's, it, it's one more. It, and I give all the credit to Brandon and Scott. Mm. I mean, the heart that they have for the people on their team mm. and what they are trying to accomplish as an organization, heirloom quality mm. jobs, elite level compensation, mm. All of that allows me to recruit at a high level mm. because the story is there. And they all they have to do is talk to one of those guys once, and they mm. know it's true. Mm. Um, so they get all of the credit. Mm. We're just pieces to the puzzle mm -hmm. in what we're doing and being able to share the story. But, you know, I, I don't... We don't have a World Series ring right now mm. at TTX, but we're knocking on the door <laughs> and we're coming on strong. Dude, tell the story, and I've I've got the whole inside angle on this thing. Uh, but I want you to I want to hear it from your perspective. Tell the story about the coin. The, oh wow, yeah, because that's a big deal. It, it is it's, a big. It's deal. totally unique. So I I just want to hear from you. So. We have talked for years, and Brandon has talked for years about really meaningful employee recognition mm -hmm. and making it, it, it special. Um, and I, I know that they're for the past two or three years they've been um, kind of throwing out ideas of different ways to create a almost the almost the hall of fame, if you will. Um, but it's, it is a core value, um, award that we gave out for the first time at our kickoff meeting this past year. And Brandon had a solid silver coin created that signifies that this individual is a TTX core value Hall of Fame member, if you will. Mm -hmm. And he presented this mm -hmm. at the kickoff meeting to one of our team members, Brian England. And the, the pride, mm -hmm. the emotion, mm -hmm. the level of excitement from his teammates and him being awarded that coin and the certificate that went along with it. I mean, it's next level stuff, Mark. Mm -hmm. It's next level stuff. Mm. And like that's why I say we don't have the the series ring yet, but mm -hmm. we're 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 coming. You're knocking on the door. We're yeah, knocking on I the door. I love that. I love that. It's it as we we work through that. Brandon and I work through this whole coin thing. And th all of the stuff around it for a while. You know, and, and we'd work on it, and then he'd run with it, and then we'd work on it, and he'd run with it. And it was so cool to yes. hear it, how it went down. And, uh, and I didn't know about the uh, nomination process. Brandon totally made that up. And it was crazy cool, <laughs> yeah. you know. Oh, it's... Uh, and the, the, um, the, it had to be 100%, uh, you know, all or nothing kind of deal. And... Um, in the emotion behind uh, it, or as they were presenting it. And did he didn't know, right, Brian? No. England? No, he did not. Yeah. He did not. Hey, hey, Mark, there, there are so many special stories that have taken place over the past few years at TTX. Mm. Just from a, I mean, a vulnerable, people have become vulnerable mm. in our organization. But that is because they trust. It is a safe place. Mm -hmm. And our team trust each other. And we have the ability to be vulnerable. And it, 
when that happens, that's when magic happens. Yeah. Well, and that's the Lenzi only thing, the five dysfunctions, right? At the bottom is trust. That's right. Trust leads to, without, without trust, you can't have healthy conflict. That's right. I think that's the next one, right? That's right. And without healthy conflict, you can't have buy-in. That's right. Right? That's and right. then without buy-in, you can't have accountability. And without accountability, you can't have results. That's right. And we start at the top, and we think, oh, let's get the results. But you got to start at the bottom and get to. trust. You have to. You know? and, and it's one of Lencioni's best stuff. Uh, well, I love being able to talk with you about this, and I'm sure hoping that some folks that are listening are saying, "Man, we've been doing this wrong," <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, and maybe they can give you a call. I can send you an email. What's your email, by the way? It's jvest at ttx hyphen inc dot com. Cool. Jvest at ttx hyphen inc dot com. Yeah. You're not the railroad railroad company. No, TTS, we are not. Right? We are not. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I I'm I, I can help and and would love to help cool. in any way I can. If I have a couple of my client clients call you that are struggling with recruiting, um, onboarding, development, would you be into talking with them? As long as they're not trying to knock on the same doors we are. Yeah, no, yeah, no, they're, <laughs> no they're I'd absolutely be. I, I would love to. I cool. mean, that's it, cool. I, it's. I I am here for a bigger thing. Hmm. This is only a part of the race, and if I can help others, um, I'm I'm love to do it. Yeah, it's really great to have you be part of TTX, buddy. And I know Brandon's got your confidence. Um, and you know, we're seeing the results inside of the business and I just, I wish every business had a Jody vest, Appreciate every that. business had a Brandon Kenny, Scott or you know, absolutely. um, it, it really matters who owns the business. Uh, I'll sit down with a, a, a prospect. And they're like, hey, we need this blah, 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 business coaching. I'm like, wait a second. Let me see, let me see what you uh, let me see what you got under the hood there, buddy. Right. <laughs> you know That's what right. I'm saying? Because it's a big deal. Ownership is a big deal. It is. And uh, leadership is a big deal. And Brandon does a good job. Scott does a good job. And if uh, and they and you do a good job, and it's really cool to see the results in the staff what's your like what's your uh what is your batting average if you i mean <laughs> so, so if you kind of say all right i hired x and x are still there at ttx yeah. um probably 900 yeah close to it so nine out of ten yeah awesome yeah. dude that is crazy good well i appreciate that it, it it's it takes a village. It's it's that is that's not speaking to just me. That's because, again, I am very fortunate to work for the people that I work for and the mm. people I work with. Yeah. Um, and it it is it is a again all about the flag. Yeah. We win as a team. We lose mm. as a team. Yeah, that's great. That's great. You know, uh, most. And I'm just thinking about a handful of folks here, a handful of businesses. Um, they're like one for five. I mean, nine out of ten is crazy good. You know, if they, if they could be two for five, I'd be like, it's it's all good now, folks, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So good job, man. Well, I appreciate it. I love it. it. Thank you. I love it. Thank you. Um Books. So, any as a, a kind of as we're wrapping up, if you were to throw out, hey, here's some books you ought to read. We got the uh, five dysfunctions, but what about from a recruiting side, a development side, uh, onboarding side? Anything that's a no brainer as far as books in your mind? Oh man, interviewing. Mark, I did from that side of it. I don't know that interviewing that I, I, I don't read yeah. books on that because mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. it's conversational. Mm -hmm. It is relational. Yeah. 
there's not a lot out there on there's interviewing. Not. There's and the, uh, oh, what's it called? Uh, I read it. It was awful. It was hard read. Um, Top Grading by okay. uh, Brad Smart. Okay. Jeff Smart, Brad Smart. And it's like 800 pages. It's an awful read. Um, but there's there's just nothing out there about... Well, Here's the thing. I, I don't. I don't know from an interviewing standpoint. I there's not a magic recipe mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. One, I am passionate about TTX. I believe in what we have. I'm sincere in what I do because I care about the people that I'm talking to. Period. And I, I know we have the story. We have an opportunity, and. If I can have a conversation and you're the right person for that, I can figure that out really quickly. And that in itself, along with some of those analytical tools that we use and have, Mm -hmm. it allows us to be successful. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's end of the day, it comes from here and you got to have some of that. Mm -hmm. You got to be committed. If you are, people are going to see that, and you're going to attract good people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the other, the other pieces to it. I mean, again, I'm not. I, I, I don't want to press anything, but the book is the book. If that makes sense. I mean, it, I I follow a greater God. I believe in things that I'm in a bigger. I'm, I'm searching for eternity. Mm. And, and with that, people see my heart and they see I care. Mm. And they want to, they, a lot of people need that. Mm-hmm. They just need you to care and listen. Mm-hmm. If you're willing to pour into people, good things are going to happen. Yeah. Folks don't know what to live for anymore. You right? know, they're kind of, they're kind of confused. They've got, you know, call of duty. That's right. Or, uh, you know, so many likes on there. Instagram or Facebook or whatever. Well, and, and, and Mark, that, and not to belabor this, but a lot of the people that I am recruiting and talking to, the fact that I am willing to invest and ask about them makes all the difference in the world mm. because no one else is interested in them mm. and they don't have anything to hold on to. Mm. So being different makes a difference. Yeah. Well, it's great to see you doing what you do. Uh, again, I brag. I brag about Brandon. I brag about Scott Ursum. I brag about Joshua Petrosini. Absolutely. I brag about Jody Vest. Appreciate that. So at uh, some point, uh, we're going to have uh, Nate in here as well. <laughs> and talk about how he does biz dev. <laughs> and so and forth. he does a great job. Yes, he does. He does a great job. Yeah. Well, Mark, I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I considered it an honor and a privilege yeah. to sit down with you today. It's been great. And anytime, um, I, and maybe we'll have you come back and dig more into the nuts and bolts of your management process, because I do think that there's um, there's something there worth diving into as far as how you actually walk through step by step uh, your your management kind of how you keep records and that sort of thing yep. you know unfortunately we got all these people doing this kind of work that just aren't any good at project management <laughs> you know, or whatever <laughs> and and there's a there's a need uh, for somebody like you to kind of like walk them through it so I'd love to hear more about that absolutely down the road Cool, buddy. Thanks Everybody so needs a Jody Vest. Great, great talking with you. Thanks for being part of TTX and uh, being on the business Broken and Smoking podcast. Thank you, Mark. All right, buddy. That's it. That's it. To wrap. All right. Awesome.